As promised, now we're going to dive into the details of cellular respiration. In the previous video, we looked at some of the main uh, details, the overview of the entire thing. You should be able to uh, recite the equation for cellular respiration at this point, understanding that glucose and oxygen uh, combine together and are turned are converted into carbon dioxide and water and produce some ATP, which is the energy. Um, glycolysis was the first step there where glucose gets split and glycolysis happens for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So we're going to go take a look at glycolysis first. Important thing for each of these stages you should know, and this video is just going to be about glycolysis. Uh, glycolysis happens to happen in the cytoplasm. So all that stuff you learn about mitochondria being important for respiration, it is, but only after this first stage of glycolysis. So glycolysis literally sounds like, so let's remember this, glyco sounds like sugar, lysis sounds like splitting, so the splitting of sugar. So that's what's gonna happen here. So my advice is, there's a lot of stuff on this page. Um, don't focus on memorizing all the little steps. Look at the big picture. Glycolysis, glycolysis sounds like splitting of sugar. So if I start with glucose, which is famous, I'm going to end up with glucose getting split into two molecules. And it happens to be called pyruvate. You can skip out some of these steps here, but understanding the overall picture will help you to fill in the blanks a little bit in between. So the goal is to create two pyruvate molecules and to end up producing a little bit of glue, uh, sorry, a little bit of energy, a little bit of ATP. So we are going to get some ATP, even though it's a tiny amount. So let's go ahead and, and split this up into the various pieces. One of the first things that happens is glucose gets converted to hexose bisphosphate. Now this is kind of interesting because I just told you we have to end up producing some ATP, some energy, right? But it turns out that this first step actually requires some ATP in the end. So ATP, so this arrow means ATP is being used, and when it's used up, it gets turned into ADP here. So uh, we phosphorylate. So TP means triphosphate. There are three phosphates here. And after it gets used, it turns into DP, diphosphate. So what are, where did one of those phosphates go? Well, check out this name here. Glucose has six carbons. Hexo sounds like six, so it's still six carbons, but now we've just added two phosphate molecules to it. So in actuality, this whole glycolysis thing can be broken up. I think the higher you level you study this at, the more steps there are. So this is good enough for a higher level biology, but glucose gets converted to hexose bisphosphate. And then this is where the splitting happens and it gets split into two molecules. Um, one name for them is triose phosphate. Triose sounds like three. Phosphate means there's still a phosphate attached, but that's not important here. This basically, these are some of the small uh, conversions that happen and you end up producing pyruvate at the end here. Um, so if I'm using ATP to make this happen, but I know it's the end with ATP, well, I better, I hope I produce more than two ATP in the process. If I only produce two ATP, I end up breaking even. Turns out I actually produce four ATP. So you do a little bit of math, uh, you end up with plus two ATP molecules. So this wasn't all for nothing. I get a little bit um, of energy from doing glycolysis. We also get another molecule called NADH, which I'll explain in more detail later, but I'm going to give you an analogy to help you remember what's going on here. Uh, NADH, we're going to end up saving these for later. So I want you to think of one in NADH molecule as a ticket that we're going to use and exchange later for some bonus prizes. We're going to see what's happening with that. Um, and now I guess we just name some of these processes. So this first process here is just called phosphorylation. Let me just select that and bring it over. That makes sense. We're phosphorylating this because we're dropping off some phosphate groups here. This is the splitting part. So we're going to call this part lysis. That's nice. Uh, ATP formation is pretty obvious here. So this whole conversion actually helps us to produce four ATP molecules. And then this one is going to be a little tricky to understand, so I'm going to try to break it down for you a little bit. Um, you remember from the previous video, oil rig, I mentioned oxidation is loss of electrons where uh, reduction is gain in electrons. It turns out if you are NAD plus and you gain hydrogen, you have just been reduced because not only did we give you hydrogen, we also gave you electrons. So think of this as, uh, oops, this is later. NAD plus is reduced. So I'm going to add that here as a little side note. And remember, NADH are our little tickets we're going to keep for later. 
And so we actually call this process oxidation. Well, why is it called oxidation? Because I just told you that this thing, NAD+, got reduced. Well, every time something gets reduced, something else has to get oxidized. So it turns out that we call this an oxidation reaction because it's a, it's a push-pull type of thing. So if this guy got reduced, then that means this guy got oxidized. So it's actually an oxidation reaction, and I've added here, of triose phosphate. So this thing, this molecule here, triose phosphate, actually donated electrons over here. So that means this guy lost, triose phosphate lost electrons. Anyways, if there's an oxidation happening, there's a reduction happening. And so that is called the oxidation part of this little conversion. And most important thing over here, if you only remember one thing out of this entire thing, just start with glucose, splitting sugar, end up with two pyruvate molecules. The end goal is you end up gaining two ATPs and two NADHs, and NADH is going to be converted later. That's our ticket, so keep those in your pocket. Think of NAD like a ticket with energy. Later, we're going to exchange it in the circus at the counter, and we're going to convert it to ATP. All right. Three more stages to go. That first stage was glycolysis. And remember to think about big picture and not get overwhelmed by the small details. They will come.